Let's suppose a consumer has preferences where utility equals x times y. Let's sketch out the indifference curve that corresponds to a utility level of 128. The first thing we need to figure out is what kind of slope do our indifference curves have? Are they upward sloping or downward sloping? Well, if both marginal utilities are positive, then we know the indifference curve has a negative slope. So let's find the marginal utility of x and the marginal utility of y. The marginal utility of x is the partial derivative of utility with respect to x, and in this case that yields y. Well, this is going to be positive for any x and y that are positive. The marginal utility of y is the partial derivative of utility with respect to y, and in this case that leaves us x. This is also going to be a positive number for any x and y that I can plug in. So since both marginal utilities are positive, we know that our indifference curve does have a negative slope. The next thing we'll try to answer is whether or not the indifference curves are going to cross either of our axes. Well, if I let x be 0, I'll be looking for whether or not it crosses the y-axis. I'll plug 0 into my utility function. Now, y, of course, could be any value. I don't know what it is. But by plugging in x equals 0, I know utility is going to be 0, and it's not going to be 128. So I know I'm not going to be crossing the y-axis. Similarly, we'll say, what if y is 0? Let's look to see if we're going to cross the x-axis. I'll plug in 0 for y. Again, x can be any value, but I'm going to get a value of 0 for utility, not 128, so I know we're not going to cross the x-axis. So I've got a downward sloping indifference curve that won't touch either axis. The next thing we'll look at is the marginal rate of substitution. Typically, we see it diminishing, so let's check to see if that's the case here. The marginal rate of substitution between x and y will be the ratio of marginal utility of x to marginal utility of y. Well, we previously calculated the marginal utility of x and the marginal utility of y, so we can substitute in. So our marginal rate of substitution, which is the rate we're willing to give up y to get one more unit of x, is y over x in this case. Now, as x gets larger, what's happening to our MRS? That's the real question here. So I like to do this with arrows. I'm increasing x, and I see that that makes the entire expression fall. So the marginal rate of substitution is diminishing. This tells us the indifference curves have the typical curvature. That is, they're going from steep to flat. The rate of substitution starts out higher and gets lower. Now, we know what shape our utility function is going to have. It's going to be downward sloping. It's not going to touch either axis, and it's going to go from steep to flat in terms of its slope. We just need to find um, some values of x and y that will help us to, to plot utility equals 128. So I'm going to start with a little t-chart. And I need to multiply x times y and get 128. Well, one possibility is 1 times 128. Another possibility is 2 and 64. 4, 32, 8, 16, 16 and 8, 32 and 4, 64 and 2, 128 and 1. I'm just going to take these points and plot them. So here's my xy space. Here I'm plotting x1, y128, x2, y64, x4, y32, and so on. Once I have all my points plotted, I connect them, and that's my indifference curve where utility equals 128.